Sorority House Massacre is a mostly forgotten slasher film for producer Roger Corman in the same vein as something like Slumber Party Massacre. Now, where Slumber Party Massacre was self-aware, clever, and had some interesting social commentary, Sorority House Massacre was a somewhat generic slasher film about nothing. It stole plot elements from Halloween 1 and 2 and has dream elements ripped straight from A Nightmare on Elm Street. Anyone who likes this movie is insane. Then call me insane, baby, because I love this film. Sorority House Massacre as a whole is greater than the sum of its parts, and more people need to know about this forgotten gem. Welcome to the Hellbound Horror Show. In 1982, the world was blessed with one of the most underrated horror comedies, the Slumber Party Massacre. The film is notable for its satire and clever wit, as well as being produced by the legendary Roger Corman. But above all else, it was also notable for being written and directed entirely by women. This was extremely rare, especially for the 80s. We only have a handful of examples, and Slumber Party Massacre really helped that trend. Another example of horror movies written and directed by women in the 80s is Pet Cemetery and tonight's movie, Sorority House Massacre. And Sorority House Massacre has major ties to Slumber Party Massacre. Carol Frank worked on Slumber Party Massacre as assistant to the director, although IMDB also says that she was the assistant director. Assistant to the regional manager. Same thing. Dwight much? The success of Slumber Party Massacre was surprisingly good, so producer Roger Corman gave Carol Frank the opportunity to write and direct her own Slumber Party Massacre-styled horror film. And hence, Sorority House Massacre was born. But it wasn't called that at first. In the beginning, it was known as Simply Sorority. That's really horrible, Andy. It's okay, Sarah. It is not. I'm glad they changed that title. The film starts with our lead girl, Beth, walking into her new sorority house. As she approaches, a man in a dark cell is having a nightmare about the same exact house. She walks into the house and he dreams of a little girl entering it. He wakes up screaming in a fit of rage and orderlies have to run in to calm him down. The sorority girls show Beth around and show her the room she'll be staying in for the weekend. Later that night, Beth has a nightmare. As she approaches the house in her dream, she sees three little girls playing in the yard outside the house. They subtly warn her about the house. I don't know why, but this reminds me of the opening of A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, which hadn't even come out yet. Do you live here? Nobody lives here. Where are you going? In there. In the house? Anyways, she heeds the creepy warnings and enters the house. She goes into the dining area and finds mannequins sitting at the table as blood drips from the ceiling. I love that this film tries to create an atmosphere. Usually, these types of cheap movies that are only trying to cash in on sex and gore don't focus on mood enough. The dream eventually leads her to a room upstairs. She pulls back the covers to the bed and finds a blood-soaked mattress which wakes her up from her dream. Most of the girls at the sorority leave for Memorial Day weekend and we are left with our main cast of characters. The main cast go to their Friday classes, but before class, Beth forgot her book upstairs. this scene. Stabbing through the mirror is brilliant, and it's actually really well executed. Moments like this get huge brownie points. At the classes, we get some movie teacher talk of psychic links between families. Ooh, foreshadowing. Well, that's enough of Save by the Bell. Let's check in on our male mental patient. Normally, he is a mute catatonic patient, but after that little fit last night, he is now full of rage, even having to be restrained. They hook him up to a brainwave polygraph machine and ask him a few questions. And as the questions are asked, Beth walks into the sorority house and sees him standing at her own fireplace. A 
it's a trippy scene and I love the lucid dream connections between the two. Sure, our serial killer to be doesn't have a mask or anything scary like that, but I kind of dig his look. That creepy, emotionless glare does ground it a bit more in reality for me, and I love it. Well, after that, we need to liven things up a little bit with a close trying on montage. You know, gotta get that TNA in somehow, as well as a group dream dissection. The killer escapes from the mental institution, and eventually all the boyfriends come over to hang out with the girls. It's the perfect setting for some teenage carnage. Deaths aren't flashy, but they are relatively quick and brutal. What does the killer want with Beth? And what's Beth's connection to the house? And why are these dreams happening? Yeah, it's not very deep, and yeah, most of you sitting at home probably already figured out all the connections. But this movie's not about the mystery. It's not about the kills. It's not about the TNA. No, as I said earlier, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Every bit of Sorority House Massacre works together fantastically, giving a fun but atmospheric-driven slasher. It might be the best slasher film about nothing. Now it's hard to pinpoint exactly why I love this film, but I'm sure a small, small part of it has to do with its exclusivity. The fact that its last foray into physical media in the US was in 2014 is never a good sign. Luckily, I have the film on the overpriced, out-of-print DVD, but the quality is terrible and it's in 3x4. There was a Blu-ray in 2014, but it was limited to only 1,200 copies. Scream Factory now owns the right to Sorority House Massacre and its two sequels, and the first one is available on Shout.tv to stream for free, but the sequels are nowhere to be found. These are more obscure and harder to find than the Slumber Party Massacre sequels. At least those got an obscure Scream Factory DVD collection release and a sequel Blu-ray release. Why no love for Sorority House Massacre? I'm so interested in the sequels, but it looks like I'll have to wait to finally see them. Sorority House Massacre is one of my personal favorite horror films. I love the dream atmosphere, sharp cinematography, 90s teen sitcom dialogue, and just the overall camp of it. Let them happen. I seriously recommend this film, and the good news is that there are a lot of ways to watch it for free online. There's YouTube, Shout.tv, Tubi, and probably some others. There's just not a lot of ways to physically own the film. And that's all I have for tonight, so as always, thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe, and take care, everyone. <laughs>